Hey Essie fans, thank you so much for waiting for my next video. It's been a really busy start to the academic year this year and even busier because I've started taking on tutoring as well. So the next video might also be in two weeks time but my tutorials are only five weeks long so everything will be back to normal pretty soon. If you want to get updates in between episodes um, and also get little bits of extra astro news um, definitely like my Facebook page and if you want extra ramblings then you can follow me on Twitter as well. Right, back to astrophysics. This week I wanted to talk to you about quasars because I feel that quasar is one of those words that people throw around when they want to sound astrophysics-y and kind of spacey because quasar is like a cool word. Um, it's a pretty cool astronomical object too. I think you'll find it's hot actually. Quasar in a few words is a feeding black hole that is generally pointing in our direction. If it was sideways on, we'd call it a radio galaxy, and if it were pointing straight at us, we'd call it a blazer. Whoa, Josie, too many fancy sounding words. <clears throat> Let's talk about quasars in more detail. Black holes come in a few varieties. Some of them are as small as the mass of our sun, whereas others range to the supermassive at 17 billion times the mass of our sun. Now black holes, no matter how big they are, always sound a bit sci-fi, a bit like something's gonna go wrong because people tend to assume that they're always feeding, they're always sucking stuff in. But the truth is, some black holes feed more than others. The black hole at the center of our galaxy is not very active at all. You can see stars swishing around it in peculiar ways. And a few years ago, astronomers were getting really excited because they thought that this cloud called G2 was going to be accreted by the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Unfortunately, this didn't happen, but it would have been really amazing to see some accretion happening up close. If we look into the distant universe and look in other places, then we actually find some very active black holes otherwise known in astronomy as AGN, active galactic nuclei. An AGN is a feeding black hole. Lots of gas and dust accretes into a disk around the black hole, and the black hole gradually feeds on this gas and dust. This causes the AGN to glow a bit and heat up and produce some light. Sometimes the material in this disk rotates around fast enough that it causes jets to be formed on either side of the black hole. If these jets are pointing generally in our direction, then we can call this object a quasar. Quasars are so bright and point-like that when they were first discovered, astronomers thought they were a type of star, because the word quasar is actually short for quasi-stellar object. Quasi-stellar means kind of like a star. They outshine their entire host galaxy. Sometimes you might be able to see a few fuzzy bits of the galaxy around the outside, but quasars are some of the most luminous objects in the universe. Even brighter are blazars, which are quasars with their jets pointing straight at us. Astronomers saw that quasars were weird and probably not stars by looking at their spectra. What they saw was that hydrogen, which is usually in one certain place in the spectrum, was shifted far to the red, which means that the light had been stretched, so the quasar was moving away from us and also it could tell us just how distant it was too. Astronomers didn't believe some of the first redshift calculations of just how far away these quasars were. It wasn't until the 1970s, until calculations were done on what the energy produced by an accretion disk around a black hole would be, and that they fitted so well with what we saw in quasars that astronomers then accepted that that's what quasars were, they were feeding black holes. It solved the puzzle as to how something so compact and so bright could be something so far away. So strictly speaking, the object that I've just been describing to you is actually a radio loud quasar. These are only about 10% of the quasars are radio loud. Now some astronomers just call radio loud quasars quasars, and they will call a radio quiet quasar a quasi-stellar object. It's difficult to say. Otherwise you can just name them by saying they're radio loud or radio quiet. Now what the difference is, is that a radio quiet quasar doesn't have jets, and as you can guess it doesn't really have much radio emission either. So we can't really see those radio quiet quasars in the radio very well. But both types of quasar have very bright emission in optical and x-ray parts of the spectrum. So now we know what a quasar is, cool! Another reason that I wanted to talk about it was because I visited Jodrell Bank this weekend, which is a really beautiful radio telescope. It's the third largest steerable telescope in the world with a diameter of 76 meters. 
And how that's kind of related is that early on when people were looking at quasars, the Lovell telescope at Georgia Bank, in line with a few others, um, confirmed the fact that quasars were compact and small. Most of the work that is done at Jodrell Bank now in terms of data is on an object called a pulsar, which are also really cool and we'll have to cover those another week. Until next time, keep being curious.